What is it, Arch? You tell me. Uh... The casting process for the 1979 TV series, later known as Archie Bunker's Place, was a meticulous task. Producers aimed to assemble a team that could seamlessly continue the success of its predecessor, all in the family. For the role of Archie Bunker, there was no doubt that Carol O'Connor would reprise his iconic character. O'Connor's profound acting skills and perfect portrayal of Archie made him an essential piece of the show. Gene Stapleton, who played Edith Bunker, was also a clear choice. However, after the end of All in the Family, Stapleton decided to leave the show to pursue other opportunities. Producers then introduced the character of Mistress Roper, played by Bernadette Peters, to fill the void. Casting the role of Archie's new love interest, Stephanie Mills, proved to be a more challenging task. After a series of auditions, producers found their perfect fit in actress Danielle Brisebois. Her youthful energy and chemistry with O'Connor made her an ideal choice. The casting of the bar regulars was equally important. Producers aimed to create a diverse and engaging group of characters. They found their perfect mix with actors like Martin Balsam as Murray Klein, Jason Wingreen as Harry Snowden, and Anne Mira as Veronica Rooney. A pivotal moment in the casting process was the chemistry test between the new cast members. Producers carefully observed the interactions between the actors to ensure a cohesive and entertaining ensemble. The final cast of Archie Bunker's Place proved to be a perfect blend of both new and familiar faces, creating a show that resonated with audiences and left a lasting impact on television history. Did he yell at you? Worse, he told me a lie. The director of the TV series, Archie Bunker's Place, Paul Harrison, brought a unique vision to the show. Harrison's approach to the story was deeply rooted in his background in theater and live television. He aimed to create a realistic and intimate setting for the characters, using long takes and minimal cuts to allow the actors to truly inhabit their roles. Harrison's creative influences included the work of Italian neorealist filmmakers and the raw, gritty style of 1970s American cinema. He sought to capture the everyday struggles and triumphs of working-class Americans, using the character of Archie Bunker as a lens through which to view these issues. To bring his vision to life, Harrison worked closely with the cast and crew of the series. He encouraged the actors to improvise and bring their own ideas to the table, resulting in a more natural and spontaneous performance style. Harrison also collaborated with the show's writers to ensure that the scripts reflected his vision for the series. In terms of visual style, Harrison favored a muted color palette and naturalistic lighting, which helped to create a sense of authenticity and realism. He also used handheld cameras to capture the energy and unpredictability of live performance, adding to the show's unique aesthetic. Overall, Harrison's directorial vision for Archie Bunker's place was one of realism, intimacy, and social commentary. Through his collaborative approach and unique style, he was able to create a show that resonated with audiences and left a lasting impact on the television landscape. What if Archie walks in in the middle of us? <laughs> <laughs> you want to go down to the... Let's talk about the 1979 TV series, Archie Bunker's Place. This show is a spin-off of All in the Family, and it continues the humorous and sometimes thought-provoking conversations of the Bunker family. One of my favorite classic Hollywood actors in this series is Carol O'Connor, who plays the main character, Archie Bunker. His portrayal of a working-class man with strong opinions is both funny and relatable. Did you know that the character of Archie Bunker was based on a real person? The show's creator, Norman Lear, based Archie on his own father. This just goes to show how personal storytelling can resonate with audiences. As we delve deeper into this TV series, we'll uncover more funny, shocking, and even sad facts. So, keep watching this video to learn more. Now, we'd love to hear from you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this TV series? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. The production of the 1979 TV series took place in a unique setting. The familiar Archie Bunker's home transformed into a bar named Archie Bunker's Place. The set designers faced the challenge of converting the living room into a fully functional bar. They achieved this by adding a long wooden bar, tables, stools, and a working kitchen. The iconic staircase leading to the second floor was retained, now serving as a backdrop for the bar. The filming locales extended beyond the studio. Exterior shots of Archie Bunker's place were filmed in a real bar in Queens, New York, named the Corner Cafe. 
the production team had to meticulously match the interior and exterior sets, ensuring continuity. Logistical challenges arose due to the show's filming schedule. The series was shot in front of a live audience, requiring careful planning to accommodate the audience's presence. The crew had to strike a balance between allowing for audience laughter and maintaining the show's audio quality. As for innovative techniques, the production team employed the use of video playback for certain scenes. This allowed the actors to react to pre-recorded footage, enhancing the show's realism. Despite the complexity of integrating video playback into a live audience setting, the crew managed to execute it seamlessly. In conclusion, the production of the 1979 TV series was marked by creative set design, strategic location choices, and the innovative use of video playback, all contributing to the show's unique charm. The idols look different way back then. Why should they? The television series, which we'll refer to as The Show, first aired in 1979, following the success of its predecessor, All in the Family. The show centers around Archie Bunker, a blue-collar worker with traditional values, and his interactions with those around him. The series was groundbreaking for its time, tackling controversial topics such as racism, sexism, and social class. The show's creator, Norman Lear, was born on July 27, 1922, and began his career in the entertainment industry as a writer for television shows in the 1950s. Lear's ability to create relatable and complex characters, combined with his willingness to address societal issues, made the show a hit among audiences. The series takes place in a bar owned by Archie, located in Queens, New York. The bar serves as a backdrop for the show's exploration of various social issues, as Archie and his patrons engage in conversations that often lead to debates and disagreements. The show's use of humor and wit made these discussions more palatable for audiences, allowing them to consider different perspectives on controversial topics. The cast of the show included several notable actors, including Carol O'Connor, who played Archie Bunker, and Gene Stapleton, who played his wife Edith. The show also featured a young Danny DeVito as a regular cast member, playing the role of Louis, the bartender. The show's impact on television history is undeniable. It paved the way for future television shows to address controversial topics and push boundaries. The show's characters and storylines continue to resonate with audiences today, making it a classic in the annals of television history. In conclusion, the show was a groundbreaking television series that tackled controversial topics with humor and wit. Its creator, Norman Lear, was a trailblazer in the entertainment industry, creating relatable and complex characters that continue to resonate with audiences today. The show's impact on television history is undeniable, making it a classic that continues to be watched and enjoyed by audiences today. Hard working, good looking dope to take care of you. <laughs> I'm gonna take care of myself. When I grew up, I'm gonna be the, the music in the film, Archie Bunker's Place, plays a crucial role in complementing the narrative and emotional tone. The show's composers and musicians created a score that subtly enhances the storyline and characters' emotions. Jazz was the chosen genre for the show's soundtrack, reflecting the urban setting of the series. Ray Along, a French horn player involved in the show's music, mentioned that the jazz soundtrack was a deliberate choice to give the show a New York feel. The use of jazz music also mirrors Archie Bunker's character, a working-class man living in Queens, New York. The show's composers skillfully use music to accentuate the emotional beats of the series. For instance, in moments of tension or conflict, the music would become more intense, reflecting the character's inner turmoil. Conversely, during lighter or humorous scenes, the score would take on a more playful tone. Composer Jack Elliott, who worked on the show, once stated that the music was meant to be part of the fabric of the show, not something that stands out. This approach allowed the music to seamlessly blend with the storyline and enhance the audience's emotional engagement. The musicians and composers also drew inspiration from the actors' performances. They would often watch the scenes and then create music that matched the characters' emotions. This collaborative process resulted in a score that felt organic and deeply connected to the narrative. In conclusion, the creation of the score and soundtrack for Archie Bunker's Place involved careful consideration of the narrative and emotional tone. The choice of jazz music, the subtle use of the score, and the collaboration between the musicians and actors all contributed to a soundtrack that enriched the show's storytelling. Murray? Wasn't he up to your standards? Never mind what he was up to, Barney. <laughs> Just like its predecessor, the sitcom was produced by Norman Lear's company, Tandem Productions.
Interestingly, Lear's name does not appear in the credits, unlike in All in the Family. The show's lead actor, Carol O'Connor, came up with the address for the Bunker family residence, 704 Hauser Street. He was inspired by Hauser Boulevard in Los Angeles, near CBS Television City, where the show was filmed. As the show's ratings began to decline, both Rob Reiner and Sally Struthers were invited to return for the third season. However, Reiner declined due to his commitments to other projects, including getting This Is Spinal Tap off the ground. This led to the introduction of Gloria as a divorced single mother in the third season. Struthers, on the other hand, was given her own short-lived series, Gloria, instead of joining the cast of the show. So they, they went out on a date. Big deal. One iconic scene in the series takes place in Archie's bar, where he and his friends gather for a drink and a chat. In this particular episode, Archie finds himself in a heated debate about politics with his longtime friend Murray. The director expertly captures the tension between the two characters through close-up shots, highlighting their facial expressions and body language. The performance of Carol O'Connor, who plays Archie, is particularly noteworthy. His ability to convey Archie's frustration and stubbornness while still maintaining a level of likability is a testament to his skill as an actor. According to O'Connor, Archie is a complex character, and I always strive to show the audience both his flaws and his humanity. The cinematography in this scene is also worth noting. The use of low-key lighting adds to the gritty, realistic atmosphere of the bar, while the camera angles create a sense of intimacy between the characters and the audience. Cinematographer George Spiro Divey explains, we wanted to make the audience feel like they were right there in the bar with Archie and his friends. This iconic scene has had a lasting impact on audiences, as it perfectly encapsulates the show's themes of friendship, politics, and working class struggles. It remains a fan favorite to this day, and is often cited as one of the series' most memorable moments. Another unforgettable scene in the series takes place in Archie's apartment, where he and his family gather for a holiday dinner. The tension between Archie and his daughter Gloria reaches a boiling point resulting in a heated argument that ends with Gloria storming out of the apartment. The director skillfully captures the emotion of the scene through the use of close-ups and medium shots, highlighting the character's facial expressions and body language. The performance of Jean Stapleton, who plays Edith, is particularly noteworthy. Her ability to convey Edith's sadness and frustration while still maintaining her signature warmth and kindness is a testament to her skill as an actress. The cinematography in this scene is also noteworthy, with the use of warm, soft lighting creating a cozy, homey atmosphere. The camera angles create a sense of intimacy, making the audience feel like they are right there in the room with the characters. This iconic scene has had a lasting impact on audiences, as it perfectly encapsulates the show's themes of family, love, and the challenges of modern life. It remains a fan favorite to this day, and is often cited as one of the series' most memorable moments. Hearing, I got dressed for our guest. Listen, if you want to... In 1979, the TV series featuring the character Archie Bunker continued, now titled Archie Bunker's Place. Carol O'Connor, who played Archie, had a notable funeral attended by various celebrities, including Norman Lear, Sally Struthers, and Rob Reiner, as well as politicians like Governor Jerry Brown. O'Connor's co-star, Gene Stapleton, who played Edith, outlived him by over a decade in real life. Sally Struthers reprised her role as Gloria Bunker Stivic in this series, a character she had played since All in the Family began in 1971. Following Archie Bunker's place, she appeared in Gloria in 1982, making her the only actor to play the same character in three different series. In the series, Edith's death was depicted off-camera, leaving Archie a widower. This storyline reflected the real-life passing of Gene Stapleton, who died after the series ended. Bradshaw. 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 You don't know how close you came to losing your license. The television series, which aired from 1979 to 1983, left an indelible mark on popular culture. The show, a spin-off of All in the Family, continued to challenge societal norms and stereotypes through its protagonist, Archie Bunker. Audiences found themselves drawn to the character's bluntness and stubbornness, which often led to humorous situations. However, the show also delved into serious social issues, such as racism, sexism, and social class, sparking important conversations among viewers. Set in a bar owned by Archie, the series provided a backdrop for exploring diverse perspectives. Characters from various backgrounds frequented the establishment, leading to lively debates and the sharing of different viewpoints. 
This setting allowed the show to tackle relevant social themes in a relatable way, contributing to its enduring popularity. Moreover, the series influenced popular culture by introducing memorable catchphrases and situations. For instance, Archie's use of the term dingbat to describe his wife, and the character's love for bowling became ingrained in the public consciousness. These elements, coupled with the show's unique blend of humor and social commentary, ensured its lasting impact. The series also served as a platform for addressing cultural shifts taking place during the late 1970s and early 1980s, the changing role of women in society, the normalization of diverse relationships, and the evolution of family dynamics were all explored in the show. By presenting these themes in a humorous yet thought-provoking manner, the series encouraged audiences to question and reflect on their own beliefs and attitudes. In conclusion, Archie Bunker's place resonated with audiences by presenting a relatable cast of characters and tackling relevant social issues. Its influence on pop culture and contribution to discussions on important social themes have solidified its place as a significant television series. Okay, Fred, copy the table 11. Hey, on. In the second season of the show, Martin Balsam decided to depart due to his dissatisfaction with the material he was given. His absence was noticeable, but the show went on. Carol O'Connor, who played the main character, had an interesting habit while portraying Archie Bunker. He wore his wedding ring on his middle finger instead of the traditional ring finger, which added an unusual touch to his character. Anne Mira, who played Edith Bunker's friend and neighbor, went on to play another character named Veronica years later in the TV series The King of Queens. It just goes to show that actors can take on various roles throughout their careers. Come on, you have to! All right, you don't yell at me there. The 1979 TV series, Archie Bunker's Place, received mixed reviews from critics. Some praised the show for its continuation of the beloved characters from All in the Family, while others felt it lacked the original's punch. The New York Times critic, John J. O'Connor, noted that the series had mellowed since its predecessor but still delivered occasional sharp dialogue and character interplay. Audiences seemed to enjoy the show, with many tuning in for the comfort of familiar characters. However, some fans of All in the Family missed the edgy humor that had defined the earlier series. Archie Bunker's Place received several award nominations, including three Emmy nods for Outstanding Directing in a Comedy Series, and one for Outstanding Film Editing for a Series. Carol O'Connor, who played Archie Bunker, was nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Actor in a Television Series, Musical, or Comedy. These accolades are significant for those involved in the film as they recognize the hard work and talent that went into creating the series. Nominations and awards can also boost the show's popularity and viewership, potentially leading to a longer run or future opportunities for the cast and crew. Moreover, the awards and nominations highlight the impact of Archie Bunker's place on television history. The show continued the legacy of All in the Family, which had already made a significant mark on the industry by tackling controversial topics and pushing the boundaries of what was considered acceptable humor on television. Archie Bunker's place may not have been as groundbreaking as its predecessor, but it still contributed to the ongoing conversation about race, gender, and politics in American society. In conclusion, while Archie Bunker's place received mixed reviews from critics and audiences, its award nominations and continued popularity attest to its enduring appeal and significance in television history. <laughs> The television series in question is a continuation of the popular show All in the Family from 1971, rather than a spin-off. The character dynamics between Archie and Meathead, played by Carol O'Connor and Rob Reiner respectively, were contentious on screen. However, Reiner and O'Connor formed a close bond off-camera. In this series, both the opening and closing themes, Those Were the Days, and Remembering You, were performed by Ray Conniff. These versions were Dixieland-styled, a departure from the original themes featured in All in the Family. The use of familiar music served to create continuity between the two shows. In essence, this series can be seen as an extension of the storyline and characters from All in the Family, but with a fresh musical twist and continued camaraderie between its two leading actors. Is stopping left? Wait a minute. We have in the refrigerator, oh, I'll get it. Get the cranberries, too. I, a little girl. I during the filming of the TV series, the set of Archie Bunker's place was a lively and bustling place. The cast, led by Carol O'Connor, was close-knit and often spent time together off-set. 
In fact, O'Connor, who played the titular character, was known for his generosity and often invited the cast and crew to his home for dinner. One memorable moment during the filming of the show involved a practical joke played on Jean Stapleton, who played Edith Bunker. The crew secretly replaced the script she was supposed to use with a fake one filled with absurd and nonsensical lines. Stapleton, known for her professionalism, didn't realize the prank and delivered the lines with a straight face, much to the amusement of the cast and crew. The show also had its fair share of mishaps. During one episode, a prop malfunction caused a small fire on set. The fire department was called, and luckily, the fire was quickly extinguished without any injuries. Despite these mishaps, the cast and crew remained dedicated to bringing the show to life. The set was filled with laughter and camaraderie, and the chemistry between the actors was palpable. The show's success can be attributed to the hard work and dedication of the cast and crew, as well as the timeless humor and relatable characters. In addition to the main cast, the show featured many guest stars, including actors, musicians, and athletes. One notable guest star was former heavyweight boxing champion Muhammad Ali. He made a cameo appearance in an episode, much to the delight of the cast and crew. The show also tackled serious social issues of the time, such as racism, sexism, and homophobia. These storylines were often met with controversy, but the show's writers and producers remained committed to addressing these issues in a thoughtful and nuanced way. In the end, the show's legacy is one of humor, art, and social commentary. The cast and crew's behind-the-scenes anecdotes offer a glimpse into the making of this beloved TV series, showcasing the dedication, creativity, and camaraderie that went into bringing Archie Bunker's place to life. What type you to work for? A freelance. I never read that one. <laughs> no. In the world of television, characters and actors often become intertwined with each other, making it difficult to separate one from the other. This was the case for Gene Stapleton, who played Edith Bunker on the hit TV show All in the Family and its spin-off Archie Bunker's Place. After leaving the show, Stapleton made her Broadway debut in Arsenic and Old Lace alongside Polly Holiday, who was also seeking distance from her own successful TV series Alice and Flo. Interestingly, Holiday was later replaced by Marion Ross, who was also making her Broadway debut following her long-running role in Happy Days. Carol O'Connor, who played the iconic role of Archie Bunker, was ranked as one of the greatest TV dads of all time by TV Guide. His character's impact and legacy continue to resonate with audiences today. Alan Melvin, who played Barney Hefner on All in the Family, had a successful career in television, appearing in dozens of shows. He is best known for his recurring roles in The Phil Silvers Show, Gomer Pyle USMC, The Brady Bunch, and All in the Family. His contributions to the world of television are still cherished by fans today. Oh, jeez, are you silly? A little hunk of clothes. The television series, which aired from 1979 to 1983, served as a sequel to the groundbreaking show All in the Family. It continued the exploration of social and political issues, but with a more nuanced approach. The show's protagonist, Archie Bunker, was no longer the one-dimensional bigot he was in the previous series. Instead, he was portrayed as a flawed but well-intentioned man, trying to navigate a rapidly changing world. This shift in characterization was a significant influence on future television shows. It showed that complex and controversial characters could be relatable and even likable, paving the way for shows like The Sopranos and Breaking Bad. The series also continued the tradition of tackling controversial topics, such as racism, sexism, and political polarization, which remains a staple of modern television. The show's impact can also be seen in the number of successful spin-offs it inspired. Gloria, which focused on Archie's daughter, and 704 Hauser, which featured a black family living in the Bunker household, were both direct spin-offs of the series. These shows further explored the themes introduced in Archie Bunker's Place and helped to broaden the representation of diverse communities on television. In addition, the series served as a launching pad for the careers of several notable actors. For instance, Danny DeVito, who played Lou, the bartender, went on to star in several successful films and television shows. Similarly, Martin Balsam, who played Murray, the owner of the bar, had a long and distinguished career in film and television. In conclusion, Archie Bunker's place left an indelible mark on television history. Its nuanced portrayal of complex characters and its willingness to tackle controversial topics helped to shape the future of television. The show's impact can still be felt today in the many spin-offs it inspired 
and the careers of the talented actors it launched. Oh, gee. You are sick. Carol O'Connor, the star of this 1979 TV series, is best known for his role as Archie Bunker in All in the Family and as Police Chief Bill Gillespie in In the Heat of the Night. Despite his conservative on-screen character, O'Connor was a liberal in real life. He and series writer-producer Fred Rubin had planned to film an episode in Italy where Archie Bunker's character had served in the army. However, CBS did not approve the idea. O'Connor, who had lived in Italy for many years, was a quiet, cultured, and well-educated man. His All in the Family co-star Rob Reiner once noted that O'Connor was even more liberal than he was. In contrast to his character, Archie Bunker, who was loud, uneducated, and conservative, O'Connor was a private, educated, and liberal individual. Despite the show's setting, O'Connor's real-life personality was a stark contrast to the character he played. His liberal views and quiet demeanor were a far cry from Archie Bunker's conservative and loud personality. It just goes to show that actors can often be very different from the characters they portray on screen. You please keep beeping them? Oh, thank you. I'll wait. What's the matter? In the television series, Martin Balsam played Carol O'Connor's Jewish business partner for a couple of seasons. Prior to this, they had acted together in the Sacco Vanzetti story on Sunday Showcase. The bar owned by the character Archie Bunker, Archie Bunker's Place, was open from 9 a.m. to 4 a.m. daily, as shown in the opening credits. Contrary to popular belief, the episode where Archie and Stephanie mourn Edith's passing was not the series premiere. Edith was gradually written out of the show over the first season due to Gene Stapleton's decision, making occasional and brief appearances like a guest star. The memorable episode where they mourn Edith was actually the second season premiere. Well, now listen. When he comes in here, don't say nothing to get him excited. I don't let him... In the world of television, many actors and actresses have left their mark through memorable roles and performances. Two such individuals are Cherie North and Carol O'Connor. North, known for her work on The Mary Tyler Moore Show, and Senefeld earned Emmy nominations for her appearances on Marcus Welby, M.D., and the show in question. O'Connor, on the other hand, was best known for his role as Archie Bunker on All in the Family, where he often referred to his wife and son-in-law as Dingbat, Stifle, and Meathead. As for the show itself, only the first season is currently available on disc as of February 2020. Despite this limitation, the impact of the series and its characters continues to resonate with audiences, showcasing the enduring appeal of well-written and acted television. Whether through North's spunky characters or O'Connor's iconic portrayal of Archie Bunker, the show has left its mark on the television landscape. Well, I ain't gonna stand still for no hold up. Now you do what you wanna do. You go, you stay. But Alan Melvin's acting career was primarily focused in animation, with the exception of his appearance in the TV series from 1979. Melvin's role in this series marked his final live action acting performance. Carol O'Connor, known for his role in the show, faced disappointment when it was abruptly canceled in 1983 without the opportunity to film a proper series finale. This led to O'Connor vowing never to work for CBS again, although he later returned to the network through his late 1980s series, In the Heat of the Night, which moved to CBS in 1992. Despite the cancellation of his successful series All in the Family, O'Connor continued to play his beloved character in the final spin-off series, the film in question. Even though the show had high ratings, it was canceled to make way for a new project, but O'Connor remained committed to keeping his character alive. <laughs> Sorry, Father. Sorry. For an impressive 12 years, and across 307 episodes, Carol O'Connor brought the character of Archie Bunker to life in not just one, but three different series all in the family, Archie Bunker's Place, and Gloria. O'Connor's portrayal of Bunker was so compelling that it spanned over a decade and across multiple shows. The series Archie Bunker's Place, a continuation of All in the Family, unfortunately did not receive a proper conclusion. Its abrupt cancellation, without even informing the actors beforehand, led to O'Connor vowing never to work with CBS again. However, after starring in the NBC series In the Heat of the Night for four years, the show moved to CBS. True to his work, O'Connor remained with it until its cancellation three years later in 1994. O'Connor's commitment to his craft and his characters was unwavering, even in the face of unexpected setbacks. His portrayal of Archie Bunker remains a significant part of television history 
showcasing his talent and versatility as an actor. I, I got no place to go tomorrow, especially. Did the show leave an impression on you? Archie Bunker's place was more than just a TV series. It was a cultural phenomenon that resonated with many. We'd love to hear about your experiences and memories related to this groundbreaking show. Perhaps you found yourself laughing at the humor, relating to the characters, or even reflecting on the social issues explored in the series. The film's impact on television and its influence on perspectives cannot be overstated. We encourage you to share your thoughts and engage with us. How did the show affect you personally? Did it change your viewpoint on cinema or television? We'd love to hear your stories and memories. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more explorations into the world of cinema. Let's keep the conversation going and celebrate the enduring legacy of this iconic TV series. You wouldn't like that, Mr. Bunker.